The opening scene features an obese schoolgirl named Jiang Wu, who has an impressive drawing skill. Apart from this, we learn that Jiang enjoys dancing, admires pop stars, and has a particular fondness for food. She narrates that her teachers and parents perceive her as a lazy student with poor academic performance, and her friends see her as a bully target. Jiang says that the main reason she goes to school is to see her crush, her handsome and intelligent classmate, Gu Bei. In order to get closer to him, she decides to run for a position on the student council. However, it's not that easy, because Jiang's opponent in this competition is Zhu Yi Yi, who is pretty smart and popular. Zhu is confident to win the competition, as she has done in previous years. During lunchtime, she shares a meal with her friend Zhang Min, and they are happy that Zhu is getting many votes, putting her in the lead. Just then, Jiang enters the cafeteria, hoping to gather some votes for herself, but her appeals fall on deaf ears. Shortly after, a mischievous boy steals her bag and tosses it onto a tree, making it stuck on a branch. He bets that everyone in the class will vote for her if she can retrieve her bag from the tree. Though nervous at first, Jiang summons her courage and starts climbing the tree. She manages to get her bag, but falls down the tree while climbing down. Later on, Zhu checks the voting tally and becomes infuriated to discover that Jiang now has more votes than she does. Afterwards, we see Jiang struggling during gym class, clearly not enjoying physical exercise. After this, she returns to her classroom, only to learn that Zhang Min's purse has gone missing. In response, the teacher permits Zhang Min to check all of her classmates' backpacks. To Zhang's surprise, she discovers a pink wallet in her own bag, likely planted by someone else. Soon after, Zhang Min finds her missing purse inside Zhang's bag. As a consequence, the teacher takes Zhang to his office and punishes her by disqualifying her from the election. After school, Zhang is walking home with a disappointed face when she is approached by an old woman. This old woman appears to know everything about Jiang's life, including the recent incident at school. Much to our girl's astonishment, the old woman can read the inner thoughts going on inside her mind. This alerts Jiang, who wonders if she is some kind of a ghost. In response, the old lady waves her hand over Jiang's face and advises her to go home. The following morning, Jiang awakens and realizes that she's running late for school. She hurriedly prepares herself and collects her belongings. Just before leaving, she notices a bracelet on her desk. Intrigued, she puts it on and touches the pearl at its center. The bracelet then emits a blue light from the top, displaying a 24-hour countdown timer on the screen. Unaware of the changes brought about by the bracelet, Jiang exits her room and calls out to her mother. When she receives no response, she boards her bicycle and heads towards school. Along the way, she stops by a street vendor, from whom she buys sandwiches every day. But today, the vendor is also missing. In the next scene, Jiang Jiang arrives at school, only to find the entire building completely deserted. She ventures to every class of the school, yet finds no one. Finally, she realizes that her dream has come true, because she always wanted to be away from everyone. Either that, or she got hit by a car. She then starts to enjoy the day, doing whatever she feels like. Initially, she spots Jiang Min's bicycle in the school's parking lot, and decides to hoist it to the top of the basketball ring. After this, she discovers a bucket filled with red paint, which she uses to paint on a school wall. If she'd done these things before, it would have made her popular. Following these exploits, she cycles back to the street vendor's store and eats as much food as she likes. At last, Jiang returns home and lays down in her bed, full and happy. She eventually falls asleep, and her bracelet touches on a surface, restoring things to their normal state. Jiang's mother then enters her room to wake her up for school. Jiang checks the clock and realizes that no time has passed between the two taps of the bracelet. She readies herself for school. And on her way, notices the street vendor appearing distressed about his missing food. Believing it to be a coincidence, she proceeds to school, only to find Zhang Min, along with her bicycle, stuck on the basketball ring. Moreover, the wall she had painted remains unchanged. Unable to digest this reality, Jiang returns home and tries to explain the situation to her mother. However, the latter dismisses her words, prompting her to walk away, sadly. Upon entering her room, Jiang is taken aback to find the same old lady eating her hidden stash of food. She asks how she got inside, but the old woman sidesteps her questions and proceeds to explain the bracelet's extraordinary capabilities. According to the old lady, the bracelet allows her to have one extra day every week. It
manipulates time, enabling the wearer to have an eighth day of the week. Once it's activated, the wearer is transported to another dimension, where they can do whatever they want. Furthermore, the lady informs Jiang that every action she takes in this dimension has consequences that ripple into the real world. Now that Jiang knows how to use the bracelet, she follows Gu Bei to his home. Using the bracelet, she sneaks into his room and looks around the place. It is at this moment when she devises a plan and writes a note for him. She refers to herself as Pi from another dimension and invites him to be her friend. Couldn't have come up with a creepier icebreaker if I'd tried. As the time restores, Gu Bei returns home and finds the note on his desk. Perplexed, he asks his mother if anyone enters his room, to which she replies in the negative. In response, Gu Bei pens another note, seeking further information about Pi. Jiang once again uses the bracelet's power, comes to his room, and writes a response. In this way, they spend some time communicating with each other. Apart from this, Jiang puts her bracelet in good use for the common good of the students. She stops time to tamper with certain school documents related to holidays, extending the break to 10 days. During an inter-school football competition, Gu Bei's team are on the verge of losing as the opponent team scores three goals. Jiang, who is watching this from a distance, feels bad for Gu Bei. As a result, she intervenes by freezing time and repositioning the ball close to the opponent's goalpost, enabling Gu Bei and his team to score several easy goals, even though that's not how sports work. Ultimately, Gu Bei and his team secure a victory with 11 goals. Later in the locker room, Zhu and Zhang Min are conversing about Zhu's victory in the election. They talk about how they planted the purse on Zhang's bag and framed her as a thief. Our girl overhears this conversation from one of the locker rooms and decides to exact revenge. She pauses time, gathers all of her classmates' wallets, and stuffs them into Zhu and Zhang Min's bags. She then exits the classroom and restores time to its normal flow. Now, the entire class considers them thieves, just as Jiang wanted. Now no one trusts any of the politicians, as it should be. The scene then cuts to the day of the exam. In the final 10 minutes, Jiang uses her ability to stop time and copies the answers from all the classmates' answer sheets. This leads her to top the exam, earning the admiration of both her teachers and friends. Zhu becomes envious due to the special attention Jiang is receiving lately. Her frustration intensifies when she observes Gu Bei engaging in sketching activities with Jiang after class. In the midst of all this, Jiang and Gu Bei continue to chat via sticky notes. One day, they are communicating in the library when Gu Bei expresses his wish to meet her in person. I want to know who's breaking into my room like every day. Jiang doesn't have enough courage to reveal herself, which causes her to stop the communication, leaving Gu Bei to wait. Shortly after, one of their classmates approaches Gu Bei with a math problem. When he is unable to solve it, the classmate seeks Jiang's help, who is also present in the library. However, she has no idea about it, so she freezes time and runs towards the teacher's office to find the answers. She somehow manages to find and copy the answer before presenting it to the classmate. Just then, another student approaches Jiang with a chemistry problem, and once again, she uses the time tactic to find the answer. Eventually, a growing number of students gather around Jiang, seeking her assistance. Overwhelmed by the sudden surge of demand, Jiang runs away from the scene. Several days later, Zhu and Jiang Min are in a restaurant, discussing Jiang's sudden improvements. As they delve into their conversation, they begin to suspect that something might be amiss with Jiang's bracelet. On the other hand, Jiang summons her courage and agrees to meet Gu Bei in person. Filled with excitement, he inquires about how he will recognize her, to which Jiang responds that she'll be wearing a white dress. Following this decision, Jiang visits a clothing store to buy a dress for the occasion. When she finds out that she cannot afford it, she uses her bracelet to steal the dress. The following school day, Zhu picks Jiang's locker and steals her bracelet. She tries it on her wrist, but nothing happens. During the break, Zhu goes to the classroom and rummages through Jiang's bag. Doing so, she discovers a notebook filled with sticky notes, from which she deduces that the bracelet only functions for Jiang. Since they can't do anything with it, Zhu and Jiang Min throw the bracelet in the trash. In the meantime, Jiang frantically searches for her missing bracelet, growing increasingly anxious. The next day, the class conducts another exam, but this time Jiang doesn't have a bracelet to help her. Left with no choice, she opts to cheat the exam, only to be caught by a supervisor. After this, the school administration summons her mother to complain about her behavior. To make the matter worse, the shopkeeper from the clothing store arrives at school to return Jiang's notebook, which she left earlier. Simultaneously, Jiang's mother finds a dress in her bag, which the shopkeeper instantly recognizes. Her behavior leaves her mother so enraged that she slaps her in front of everyone. Zhu and 
Jangman eavesdrop on their conversation and spread the news to the entire school, creating a hot topic for the students to gossip about. Feeling humiliated, Jiang grabs her bag and runs away. In the next scene, Jiang wanders aimlessly along empty streets, venting her anger by shattering glass bottles. After a brief while, she is lucky enough to locate her bracelet. She puts it back on and enters an abandoned warehouse to spend the night there. Meanwhile, her mother gets very worried about her missing daughter. She looks for her everywhere, but to no avail. The following day, Jiang remembers her planned meeting with Gu Bei and hurries to their designated rendezvous point. However, her heart heart sinks as she witnesses Zhu is already there, taking her place. She is wearing a white dress and recites some of Jiang's notes, convincing Gu Bei that she's the one with whom he had been communicating. He immediately sends her to jail for breaking and entering 25 times. No, that's not true. From that day onwards, the disheartened Jiang begins living alone in the warehouse, gaining more and more weight. A year later, Jiang is approached by the same old woman, who asks why she's living such a miserable life. Tearfully, Jiang confides in the woman, acknowledging her past wrongdoings. She also wishes to return home, but she can't dare to face her mother. Sensing her sorrow, the old woman explains that she can solve some of her problems, but she cannot erase people's memories. Therefore, Jiang will have to confront her problems by herself and move forward. Following this, the old lady erases something from her diary, which resolves the conflicts between Jiang and her mother. Finally, Jiang returns home, where we can see an emotional reunion of the mother and daughter. Starting the next day, Jiang returns to school, but she is still hated by her classmates. Nevertheless, she is determined to change and improve herself. She throws all of her hidden snacks in the trash and dedicates her extra time to exercise and study. In the midst of this process, she also visits Gu Bei's room, where she discovers a wall full of sticky notes. In these notes, Gu Bei apologizes to Pai for failing to recognize that Zhu is not her. This deeply moves Jiang, but she takes it as a motivational factor to work even harder. After several months of hard work, Jiang loses a significant amount of weight and also excels academically. Now ready to meet Gu Bei, she writes him a note, revealing everything about herself. She also apologizes for disappearing for a long time and keeping him waiting. She then visits Gu Bei's house to deliver the note, only to find another note left by him on his desk. As she reads it, she learns that Gu Bei is returning to his hometown. Upon learning this, she uses her bracelet to freeze time and hurriedly rushes towards the train station. A couple of hours later, her bracelet runs out of time, and her bicycle also breaks down. Despite these obstacles, she doesn't give up and continues running toward the station. By the time Jiang arrives, Gu Bei's train starts moving. She frantically searches every window of the departing train and eventually manages to locate him. Wasting no time, she signals that she is Pai, whom he has been speaking with. When he's unable Able to understand, she writes a confession on the platform floor, which leaves him in shock. However, they're unable to react as the train sets off. In the final scene, Jiang meets the old woman, who is trying to help a young fat boy. She hands over the bracelet to the woman, saying that it is time for it to find a new owner, now that it has completely failed her in every way. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.